<laughs> Welcome to our uh, online worship for the third Sunday in Advent, uh, December 13th. We're delighted that you are able to find a way to join us, whether it's live via Zoom or later on the recorded message. Uh, we pray that this uh, time spent together in God's presence might be a blessing to each and every one of you. Uh, by now, many of you are, are wondering what a Christmas season is going to look like here at St. John's. And, uh, well, it's going to be nothing like you remember, but we do have some plans that will hopefully let uh, our Christmas services be widely available. And for the sake of those who are participating in the recording and the production of these uh, of these uh, services, uh, and that includes Daryl and Dave and Allison and Pamela and today Bev Barish, uh, we've decided that our Christmas Eve service will be available at 7 o'clock on the YouTube channel and on the website. Uh, we will be pre-recording that so that we can enjoy a Christmas Eve at home. But what we will do on Christmas Eve at 6.30 is gather via Zoom so we can have a Christmas catch-up ahead of the launch of the, of the service. So look for information on how to connect with us on Zoom on December the 24th, and that will be at about 6.30, and then the service will be available immediately after that uh, time of gathering and, and fellowship online. Uh, the session met this week and has also uh, considered that there may be folks among us who don't have the, uh, the access to good uh, uh, online uh, systems for meeting and greeting with one another. And so we've decided that if, if you're wondering how to get connected with your family at a distance this Christmas, uh, we would like you to know that you can use our Zoom account to do that. Now, we're only allowed to have one event at a time, so it would need to be scheduled. But if you would like to schedule time on the Zoom account through Christmas, please give me a call in the next couple of weeks, and I will help you set that up. We are also going to be offering some midweek uh, kind of catch-up events on Zoom so that we can spend a little more time in one another's virtual presence. I realize it's a little awkward when you arrive on Sunday and you're suddenly muted and I'm the only one that gets to talk. We'd like to change that. So uh, there will be a chance for the next several weeks in the middle of the week just to come online together and... Uh, do a little catching up. Next Sunday's service will uh, be a service that features the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And that too will be a little different than it has been. Uh, so I would inv invite you to bring to next Sunday's uh, sitting of the, of the worship service your own communion elements so that at the right time we can commune together in this virtual way. That's the news that I have, and there will be more news coming through the week via the email. Um, but I leave all of those things to your careful and prayerful attention as we gather this morning around our Advent wreath, ready to light the third candle, the candle of joy, as we continue our Advent journey. So let us gather together in God's presence. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. Let us light the candle of joy. The responses in this morning's liturgy will appear on the screen in their time. In this season of Advent, we celebrate God's joy, knowing that Christ is coming to bring healing and wholeness to the world is a source of delight. When we gather for worship, it is a celebration 
an opportunity to rejoice in all that God is doing among us and beyond us. We welcome our neighbors and celebrate God's goodness. Even when we face difficulty and trouble, we sing a song of faith, confident that Jesus is able to redeem our suffering world. Together, we are a sign of God's joy for the world. Let us pray. God of transformation, we rejoice that you lift up the lowly and bind up the brokenhearted. We marvel at your power to change hearts and lives. Fill us with your spirit this season so that our voices declare your goodness and our lives proclaim your mercy in Jesus Christ. Amen. The first of our musical offerings this morning you are unmuted. Uh, is given us by Pamela and Allison. It is from the Presbyterian Church's Book of Praise, number 143. It infant, holy, infant, lowly. <clears throat> infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle stall, oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the baby is Lord of all, swift a winging, angels singing, Noah's ringing, tidings bring. Christ the baby is Lord of all. Christ the baby is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of rejoicing free from sorrow praise his voicing greet the morrow Christ the baby is born for you Christ the baby is born for you We are moving slowly but surely into the heart of the Canadian winter. The days have been getting shorter and colder for weeks now. And much of what we appreciate about the season of Advent and, and the run up to Christmas is the, the profusion of lights that that beat out against the darkness. Lee and I uh, took the second of several Christmas light tours last night, and it is a remarkable and joyful thing to see houses lit up beyond belief. Um, and this was at six o'clock in the evening. And the, the, the joy that that brings is, is hard to measure. This season of Advent, this time of Christmas for the church, is a time to strike out against the darkness. We light candles in their turn. We celebrate, we sing songs that bring light to us. And that is as it should be, because the darkness is not just physical. It's not just that the sun goes down a little earlier or that the night lasts a little longer. The darkness that we 
rage against. It's a darkness of emotion, a darkness of the soul. We are in difficult times. We have been told that the thing that we love the most about this season is now denied us. There will be no groaning tables laden with food as family comes in from every corner of the province or the country. That brings a darkness to us that is hard to describe and hard to overcome. But this is a season of waiting after all. And we, as followers of Jesus, know how to wait. From as far back as the prophet Isaiah, God's people have been told to wait. Wait for the promise that will come, for the light that will shine. Our reading from Isaiah this morning talks about that darkness, the deep darkness that covers the earth and all its peoples. And we know, we know that God's light can throw off that darkness. But we must be patient. We can outweight the darkness. The sun always rises. The candle might flicker, but it burns. And God's promise is unquenchable, even now. As we consider our place in the darkness and our hope for the light, let us once again Unite our hearts in prayer. Mighty and merciful God, in these confusing times, in this chaotic season, when darkness overwhelms us, when sadness and grief and anxiety threaten to undo us, Forgive us. Forgive us for not understanding the promise that you gave. Forgive us for not seeing past the darkness to the light that is in Christ. Forgive us for trying to run around the darkness to make our own light. Bring light to us in your own way, in your own time, that we might celebrate with you and rejoice with all people that the light does shine in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next musical offering is again from the Book of Praise and offered by Pamela and Allison. Selected verses, just in case you're singing along, selected verses of number 148, it came upon a midnight clear. Still through the cold. 
to gather now before our scripture lessons for today. Let us yet again find our hearts and minds together in prayer. The day is coming close, O oh God. The day that we have longed for, the day that we are eager to celebrate. The day your son arrives and we recognize God with us. And as we turn to those ancient texts, texts that promised his coming and promised the beginning of something new and wonderful for us, we now claim those promises as our own and look with new eyes to see them established. Your word is before us, O God. Speak, for your servants are listening. Amen. My responsive reading this morning is, is a reading out of order, and that's, that's on me. But it is a reading of Isaiah 60, uh, verses 1 to 6. A reading that for many will evoke uh, the music of George Frederick Handel and that great oratorio, The Messiah. A reading that speaks to the promise of God to bring light through any darkness. Together, let us share in that reading from God's word from Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 6. The responsive reading will appear on your screen as if by magic. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Amen. Thus far, a reading of God's word. <clears throat> this morning's gospel lesson, we move for the next several services into the gospel according to Luke, the Christmas gospel, if we're being honest. And this morning we encounter Mary who has discovered she is with child, who has run to her cousin Elizabeth, who is also expecting. And Mary and Elizabeth talk together as women do, and Mary reveals this wonderful song of praise as recorded in Luke's Gospel. Listen with me as we listen for a word from God from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, 
for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next Musical selection is shared with us by Bev Farish. Uh, Bev and Allison together will offer us from number 122 in the Book of Praise, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Until the Son of God appear, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to Tries on Sinai's height. In ancient times didst give the law, in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. of hell thy people save and give them victory o'er the grave rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee o Israel O come thou Close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice.
to thank Bev and Daryl and Allison and Pamela for um, being so willing and able to provide music for us, even as the delivery method changed over the course of the last eight or nine months. Um, it's a much appreciated thing, and we are, we are all better for it. So thank you. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, I bring you this word today. Amen. So it's a challenging thing to listen, to really listen to Mary's song in December. Luke 1, 46 to 55 does not sound like the typical rejoicing of an expectant mother. We have all heard that news shared by family and friends, and we know it, 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 it always sounds delightful, and, and we jump up and down and, and hug one another at the thought of a new life, of a new addition to the family. Mary's song is nothing like that. Mary's is a defiant hope that extends beyond her desire for a healthy, happy baby. She doesn't seem to be concerned about herself or her growing family in the way that we are used to hearing expectant mothers sing. She is, in fact, anticipating remarkable changes in the order of things. And that's challenging because we don't usually think in terms of social upheaval in our Christmas preparations. Change, social change, is, is not on our Christmas lists. We want, in this order please, hope, peace, joy, and love to prepare us for our celebrations with gift exchanges and food and nearness and love. But maybe, maybe this year, maybe just this once, we are ready for some change to the order of things. Now, I'm not talking about the, the ordinary changes that that will come from events like this pandemic. I'm not talking about mere changes in government, that quadrennial game of musical chairs that comes with fresh promises of new best practices from people we learn not to trust. And I'm not talking about surface level changes that are decorative and pleasing to the eye that come from a once a, once a year outreach that's disguised as goodwill for all. I'm talking and Mary is singing about real change. The, the change that Mary sings about is a recognition of God's sovereignty. The acknowledgement that the world has for too long been shaped by a selfish humanity. And according to Mary, God is ready to remind us, all of us, of the true nature of God's desire for creation. That's quite a tall order for a third Sunday in Advent carol, isn't it? But it's not just Mary's song we are hearing. We are anticipating a child. The reminder that God is bringing to the world in Mary's time comes in the form of a beloved child, Jesus. Now, Mary is a lot of things to a lot of people. But she is also a good mother. 
and as a good mother who knows that she's in a dangerous predicament in a, in a world that doesn't treat women very well. Hers is an untimely pregnancy, if you'll remember. And so she turns to her elder cousin Elizabeth, who has some experience herself in this sort of thing, having recently discovered a pregnancy in her old age. And these two women in the gospel, indeed all women, or many of the women in the gospel, have no power, not even over themselves. The only power they have is the power that is managed for them by their husbands. But these women also bear the gift of life. And that is a power that men have never really understood and have always been a little fearful. And that continues to this day. So these two women get together and between them, they give voice to the ancient hope that the one who holds the power of life and love over all creation also has the power to upend the sad, selfish state of the world. So Mary's song is a song worth singing and a song worth hearing, and it's even more important for us to hear it this year. For this year, there is even more evidence of the selfish state of things in our world. As we struggle to understand what it means to live through a pandemic, we have, each of us, encountered that selfishness. Sometimes it even emerges within us. Fear fear of the almost universal uncertainty that we are enduring has driven far too many people to offer simple, selfish solutions to the state of things. But there is no sim single, simple solution that answers the questions of public safety and global health, that answers the questions of the climate catastrophe that we are faced with, that answer the questions of the economic disparity that is universal. There is no silver bullet. Though we benefit from generations of technological, social, and economic advances, and while we enjoy the benefits of efficient global travel and trade, those things have helped us to forget that the world is a vast, complicated place full of diverse and complicated people. Mary's song addresses that complexity. It is not the simple plea of a simply faithful person. She looks to God to untangle one strand at a time, the mess that we have made of God's gift. And of course, the child that moves Mary to sing about social revolution is Jesus. By looking to Jesus, we will be invited to reimagine the way the world is ordered the gospel accounts of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection offer us new models for relationships and new ways to describe our connection to the loving and grace-filled heart of God. And that's not a, sol a simple solution either. For to follow Jesus is to carefully and compassionately re-examine our approach to everything. And it'll take time. It's going to take time to unravel the fabric of our me-first approach to everything. 
And once it's unraveled, the strands that bind us together must be fashioned into a new garment, one that offers the same benefits, the same opportunities, the same care and compassion to everyone. And that's difficult work. Suddenly, Mary's song sounds like a Christmas project for the whole world. So, while we scramble to remake our Christmas traditions, and as we mourn the fellowship and the family gatherings that will be strangely diminished, and even absent for most of us. Maybe we might consider that these two are difficult but necessary steps on the journey to redeem creation. Maybe, just maybe, Mary's song might begin to sound like a Christmas carol after all. Amen. All glory, honor, might, and majesty in this and in all things be given to God and to God alone, now and always. Amen. As we consider what we have read and what we have heard and what we have learned as this week has played itself out, let us consider the good that God has shown us. Let us imagine the good that we might do for one another as we quietly reflect on the season that is before us. Let us gather together all of our prayers for all God's people as we offer our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession this day. Mighty God, whose Son has brought us hope, whose light shines out in our darkness, we offer you our thanks this day for the world in which we live, for the relationships which we treasure, for the celebrations and the memories that sustain us. We offer you thanks, especially this year, 
because it will be the memories that sustain us. We will have to reimagine our traditions. We will have to find new ways to make good connections. But we do this in hope, O oh God. For you have given us hope above all things. We thank you for the technology that allows us to overcome the obstacles of distance. We thank you for the treasured memories that burn brightly within us and for the opportunity to make new memories in very different ways this year. The story that we tell of our faith journey, O oh God, is a story of persistence, a story of mountaintop experiences and death valley marches. And this season will take its place in the story we tell. But the constant companion in that story is your precious spirit. For we are not walking a fresh path, but one that Jesus blazed for us. And for that we are grateful. Even in our gratitude, O oh God, we cannot forget our hurt and pain. For the separation that is very real. For this illness that continues to have its way with the world. For those who are suffering, for those who have died. For those whose anxiety has overwhelmed them. For those we love, we now pray. Let your comforting, compassionate spirit guide them through even the darkest of days. And may we find new ways to be light and love to those who need it most. Give us the grace to share our good news carefully and to hear bad news respectfully, that together we might find a way through. These are our prayers, some of them too urgent for words which we offer together, bound up by the name and in the strength of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Beloved, go with grace, mercy, and peace into the world that awaits you. Know that God goes with you. May God's blessing, the blessing of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always and stay with you always. Amen. People inside
time to sing. Come, 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 Jesus Christ. Bells in the steeples are waiting to ring. Come, Lord Jesus Christ. These days of adventure when all people wait are days for the advent of joy. Friends, thank you again for gathering with us today. Keep joy alive in yourselves and in your family and in your community by following Jesus into the week ahead. Blessings to you all. We'll see you next week.